And welcome back to LinkedIn Logs. This is the business podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there if you didn't know. I'm your host, Chad White. We are obviously doing this <laughs> in different ways than I've usually done it for some reason. I'm wearing a wrinkly white shirt. Thought I'd, thought I'd bust it out. No big deal. It was at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> I said, let me get this white shirt on. <laughs> I put it on, and I saw the wrinkles, and I said, Ooh, boy. Nobody watches the video, so it's fine. Here we are, back at it again, episode 27. I'm on my LinkedIn right now. I'm literally looking at the job section. Why is general manager of McDonald's being offered as a top pick to me when I've only ever applied for television jobs on this, on this thing? I, I feel as though... And I'm very, I, sometimes I, sometimes I'm picky, sometimes I'm not, um, but I feel as though that the jobs on LinkedIn are drying up, at least for me. I'm changing up how I search for things. I'm, I'm broadening my horizons. I'm not, it's not always producer, freelance producer, content, it's, it's, I'm switching, I switch it up every so often. And and even you know, I'm getting I'm getting uh, uh, job ads from CNN. I'm getting job ads from Fox News, Fox TV stations, the local Fox station, Next Star, which is another right leaning thing. <laughs> but then it is so strange to get like assistant manager of dining general. I don't know what that is, or like the restaurant group in L.A. It, it, it like sandwiched between TMZ and NBC Universal. It's so strange to get non-media jobs inside of my LinkedIn. Is there an update? There's no update. But I had a, I had a phone call that was not a work phone call yesterday. It was dealing with uh, short the short story is when I was laid off from court tv bounce tv from scripts uh i didn't get my full benefits not not the not the severance not the benefits from the thing but the unemployment benefits and that was in 2021 when i was laid off so i filed for the benefits i didn't get the full year then i filed a claim an appeal whatever on that on the on the, on the claim benefits it took them until December 2023, to send me something in the mail, not email, not phone call, in the mail. And thank goodness I paid attention because usually I just look at something and I go, okay, I don't need that in North recycling. And they were like, you are, we're going to have a court case for you. The court case was yesterday via phone, thank goodness. And I spent 30 minutes trying to plead my case. And the officer was like, well, your, your claim benefit year was up. Which all of this still doesn't make sense to me. And they were just like rushing through everything. They're treating like it's a real court case over the phone, you know, reading like do you swear the whole chill, the whole truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, all the sort of you got and all this stuff. And I and I and I try and I tried to make my case. You could have brought an attorney, you could have had witnesses. The only witness I had was my mom. She was in a meeting. And she offered to come and I was like, You don't have to do that, it's fine. And then the lady the the court lady was like, You know, you don't need I think it'll be sufficient. And she friggin' steamrolled me. Truly, they owed me like, the, if if my math was correct, like close to eight thousand dollars, but it's whatever. Can't can't fight it now, uh, but I will be stealing from the government at some point. I will. I fully. I'm warning you now. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna find some way to steal from the government, and I'm gonna take at least eight thousand dollars worth of something. I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm gonna get my money back. I just watched the movie. Um, breaking before before uh, uh work on saturday i was i was uh, I, I like to uh, have to work out you know this body don't stop for nothing and it's like 6 a.m and i like to watch action movies that i just i like that i don't have to pay full attention to sometimes they're thrillers sometimes they're mystery movies but it's most of the time action movies i've seen last rambo three times two times by accident <laughs> one time on purpose 
Uh, and every time, and it's I, and every single time, it's me sitting on my bike back there, Peloton's on the iPad, and like cycling, and I look up and I go, oh, I've seen, I've seen this already. And it, and it, each time it's like at a different length. The second time, I believe I got half, more than halfway through the movie, so I just said I got to finish it. The, the, uh, the third time, I was like truly 10 or 20 minutes in, and I went, oh, I've seen this, and I just finished it. <laughs> It is such a forgettable movie. And it's not the best Rambo. I think the, what's the Rambo that came before that one? That's the one I like the most because it has the most disgusting action. And then the first one's good. And then I don't remember the second one. Is that one called Next Rambo? It's, they're all named after Fridays. <laughs> Rambo, Next Rambo, Rambo after Next. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. All right. I'm going to turn into uh, Scott on Pivot. Telling a bad joke and then saying that's fine. Anyway, I lost that court case. Uh, but then, a- as soon as I got off the phone, I texted my mom. She, she, she. It's very funny. She got out of her meeting and she was like, and she called me. She's like, "This is ridiculous. They owe you money." It's just like this tiny little woman, just mad at the at the at the Georgia Department of Labor for screwing me. Uh, and then, as soon as I got off the phone with her, I got an email from a job that, uh, quite frankly, I'd done some contract work for them. I'd done two things for them. And then they never got back to me. And I reached out and they never got back to me. And then uh, they were then they were looking to hire people full time. And I saw them all over LinkedIn. Uh, and then I applied. Um, and then they emailed me yesterday and said, hey, we already filled that position, but we would like for you to uh, check out this other thing that we have for offer. And we want to see if you are uh, interested. And I said, yeah, dude, I'm ready. They're, they're, they're like, uh, you want to, it's for, it's for, it's another freelance position. But uh, it is, it's a producing job. And uh, they didn't say my name, but, and then they also included somebody else on the, uh, on the email CC'd. So they didn't say my name and I was just like, did you mean to send this to somebody else? Cause that has happened before, which I think I've described here, but, uh, they, but they, but they were talking to me, I assume, <laughs> cause I did respond at noon and they did not get back to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I was, uh, they're like, Hey, uh, are you, do you, are you free to have an interview? So I'm like, yeah, free to have an interview. So hopefully that'll be set up for next week sometime. Look, if you ask me for an interview, I will do it immediately. I will do it today. I will make time because a I ain't I'm not doing a freaking thing and b let's get it started because <laughs> I'm ready I'm ready to go I'm ready I'm ready to no longer do uh, uh, part time work because it is uh, frustrating to say the least and not challenging. <laughs> All right, let's get into our first story. This comes from the Wall Street Journal, written by Alexandra Bruhl. Essence is in talks to buy Refinery29 from Vice Media. Uh, It's So we know Vice is in trouble. Vice is on the verge of shutting down. If if that's, like, at at worst, it's on the the verge of imploding on itself and never being another uh, website ever again. They've turned, well, I mean, they've all but given up the website. They have turned now into all the verticals are now all focused on, I'm guessing, social stuff. And if they can, uh, video stuff like YouTube and TikTok focused things. But right now, it's all going to be mostly social things. And when a company is in, uh, I'm going to use the word that, uh, uh, who's the writer again? I'm so sorry. Alexandra Brule. I'm going to use the word that uh, she used in the headline, embattled. If, if a company is disembattled, they're going to be looking for ways to save, not save themselves, but to to soften the blow. And at this point in time, it looks like the company that the website that uh, Vice purchased a couple of years ago, truly just a, a handful of years ago in 2019, they're going to have to sell that off. And that website's Refinery29, and Essence is looking to uh, purchase it. Now, Essence is a uh, black-owned media brand and is looking to expand its digital profile and reach more young women, Brule writes. Uh, and it's it's important that I, th- I always felt that 
essence was a uh, women driven women focused type media thing and uh and and refinery 29 is a a very woman focused thing and so it's good it's good to see something like essence take over uh refine i don't know if you just heard a slam outside but i did and i felt it and it pisses me off uh (laughs) and it's good to see something like essence come in and take over some uh refinery 29 because that's what it needs i don't think refinery 29 ever really felt as though it belonged in the vice family it, it didn't belong with like you know there are other verticals um mother i think that was one and pothead or weed smoker i don't know and and sex and sex workers <laughs> and uh and when and, and i mean waypoint barely felt uh felt like it fit in there uh but i never really read waypoint which is the gaming vertical for them so whatever Refinery 29 was founded in 2005 and it was uh, one of the first big early digital media companies to really become uh, a, a women uh, among millennial women uh, w- a women driven thing uh, it got uh, revenue through re- it, excuse me it, uh, revenue was generated through ads uh, events and licensing deals and and refinery 29 was purchased by vice because vice is such a male driven uh, audience. Refinery29 has struggled with the same challenges other online publishers have, including a volatile ad market and a decline in traffic sourced from Google and social media sites. They saw a decrease in revenue in 30 mil- to $30 million last year from around $50 million in 2022. Essence Ventures, which is owned by Richelieu Dennis and the magazine's parent, is among the company's marketers, uh, are, uh, excuse me, is among the companies marketers are targeting as they try to increase spending on black-owned media. We know Vice is uh, going down. It was once valued at $5.7 billion, and now is just basically circling the drain. Um, I do. I don't. I, I don't even know if Essence has. Uh, I know Essence. Hold on, Essence Magazine. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna Google that. I know Essence has its uh, the Essence Fest and everything. But now I'm on their website, and it looks kind of rudimentary. It looks like something that I would put together. If you if you go to cpluscomedy.com, it truly looks like. First of all, the first page, the front page is way too long. Just there's they put all this all of the uh, all the sections on the website are. You know, what? I'll just uh, here. I'll just do this. Let me just share the page. Actually, I don't even know if I have the window capture on. Oh God, this is gonna take forever, dude. Why did you decide to do this? <laughs> why did you decide to do this, man? Oh my God. Okay, I don't even care anymore. Anyway, don't watch the video; it's bad. Uh, but it the 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 website's not good. It just kind of looks bland and and kind of barren and everything, uh, and somehow still long as a CVS receipt. Um, and and Refinery will be a great compliment to that because i do like what refinery 29 does they do have a a youtube channel where they will um uh, show off uh uh, women will show off their apartments uh in new york or or wherever they live and they'll go i bought it for you know i paid six thousand dollars and i'm a beauty consultant at vogue (laughs) they have these ridiculous jobs how do you afford to live in these places oh my god this is going to be a good deal. It's going to be hopefully something that will work out in, in the end. This next one comes from The Rap, written by Natalie Korak and Emily Smith. C- new CNN digital head urges cross-functional effort in first-day memo staff yawns boilerplate stuff. It's an exclusive. There is a new memo coming from Alex McCollum, uh, which kicked off her role, at, who kicked off her role, rather, as CNN's EVP of Digital Executive Vice President <laughs> Digital Products and Services on Monday with a staff memo touting her plans to build out digital offerings, which uh, people called a boilerplate ma- message that was received with a collective shrug. In quotes, a person with knowledge of the network's internal communications tells the rap. And I, I the the memo is included, uh, and we will we will skirt over it for a bit, but. When you, <laughs> these memos to staff, which I was at CNN, I was at Cartoon Network, I received those often, uh, when they, all, the, all the time when they come out, but I, I never really read them 
because uh, I, I more more or less knew what was what was going to happen. And and I mean, unless they say you know jobs are being cut, I'm not going to pay attention. So when 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 CEOs, I'm going to say when one more time, when CEOs send out these messages, they seem insincere and they seem they appear to be insincere and they appear to be just kind of boring and uh, uh, wrote and and there, as if there's nothing of substance in there. And a lot of the times that's what that's what they are. And unless you're announcing something that is supposed to be astronomically important, you know, as as in job cuts or as in, hey, we just purchased Refinery29, then it doesn't really matter in the long run. And and when you look at this memo that has uh, a sentence like the depth of CNN's reporting, the immediacy of the turnaround during breaking news and the excellent storytelling across video, text, audio, visuals, and emerging platforms are impressive and exhilarating. When you say things like that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're complimenting people. They're doing their jobs and they're already they're already doing what they can in order to make uh, your you know to make to make you make more money in the end. And it just seems like I could go up to uh, uh, a woman and that I know and just and compliment you know how she looks. It'd be like you're beautiful, you're you're gorgeous. You, I could just say all the synonyms in the world, but if I if I don't know her, I don't know why I'm using this analogy. <laughs> this is so strange. <laughs> but if I if I don't know her, uh, and I just say all this service level stuff, it's only gonna take me so far. Because if I'm trying to date somebody, I'm not gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna be over and over again. You're beautiful. You you're fantastic. You uh, instead of talking about you know who she is as a person. If I'm nothing but a white knight, guys. <laughs> An individual with knowledge of the situation says the memo was met with a collective shrug from employees at CNN. It was just boilerplate stuff. And also, I want to tell you this. Whenever, I've never been one of those sources, uh, an individual. I've never been in one of those. Um, I, and I would, I would welcome it. If a reporter reached out to me and said, we will keep you anonymous, I would be so happy. However, uh, I can tell you right now, that when people like when whenever we get these uh, um, like memos and everything, people just you know talk about them, but then they just kind of move on. They go, oh, that memo, and then they just kind of move on. There's no, <laughs> this is this is like this is a a a, 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 repre- a, a quote unquote representative talking about how the other people around them were talking about it. It's there. It's never gonna like. There's never. There's not a bunch of people getting together and going. We need to discuss this memo. <laughs> It's a lot of, quite frankly, it's just a lot of people taking a dump on it and then moving on with their lives. Uh, so the way that reporters paint their sources for media companies when it comes to memos and stuff or tech companies or whatever, it's it's so it's so stupid. The insider said, "quote The only takeaway was partner and work cross functional functionally. How the hell is that going to work?" So I I take that to me, and then CNN had a response to that, uh, whatever. Now see, I take the there's there's a part in the in the memo when it says uh, uh, cross. Let me let me go down to cross. Let me go. Let me get let me get the words. Uh, here's the here's the last paragraph that Alex McCollum wrote. Doing new and different things and building new and different products means taking risks and changing the way we work. I mean, come on. That's every literally everybody is doing that. Even Fox News is doing that. I've seen firsthand that CNN can do both is excellent. We can build new compelling products. We can think boldly. Okay. This is just like truly surface level. And we can partner and work cross functionally across uh, this great organization. Now, partner and work cross func- functionally. I know, I know in terms of this is because this is something I thought of uh, uh, when I was at the gym this morning. Actually, um, to 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 cut what what they mean is, and people are tired. I'll tell you right now, people are tired at CNN. They're very they're overworked right now. What what I feel that they mean, Alex McCollum means, is that they want people at CNN, producers for TV shows, to reach over across the aisle to the digital people and be like, hey, can we please use X? Or or they want the digital people to cut more video from, from the broadcast and include it into articles. 
They want they want all that type of thing. They want this. They want snap. They want TikTok video. Excuse me to uh, uh, reference the TV shows to reference the podcast. This is what this is what's going to happen. They want everything to interplay with each other. They want Audie Cornish's podcast. If she has an interview with somebody who was not able to make it on television, then they want. Uh, Audie Cornish's podcast to be referenced by Wolf Blitzer and then that clip to be clipped out and and that to be talked about by Jake Tapper. They want all these things to happen. And at some point, like the, that would take a true, and I, I'm not a fan of Marvel, but it would take a Kevin Feige to look over and basically go, well, they said that on, on, on CNN.com and then they said that on uh, CNN News Central and they said that on uh, the Max show. And it, it just, it doesn't, it's too much at some point. And, 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 and when it comes to having all of this, this crosstalk, you're not going to be able to really match everything because that's just how it, that's how it goes. And look, yes, it's true. I applied, I have, and I've been applied to a shit ton of jobs at CNN still, even though they, uh, uh, my contract was not renewed uh, in December and I was laid off before Christmas. Not laid off, my contract ended before Christmas. <laughs> Two weeks before. I'm still, try, I'm still out here trying to champion them and help them along. You know what's really funny? On LinkedIn, you can look at <laughs> this is this is too much. You can look at who viewed your profile. Obviously, in the past week, three people who work at CNN, three people who work at Warner Bros. Discovery, two who work in the rec- recruiting industry. I'm going to pretend that's Warner Bros. Uh, and one person, two people I used to work with, as well as a reporter at CNN, have all looked at my profile. I see you. I see you looking at my profile. You all need to get off your asses and get me a freaking job. I'm ready to get back to work. And look, look, I think about this all the time. If I'm hired back at CNN, I'm not going to stop doing this. I'll tone it down a little bit, but I'm not going to stop doing it. I'm like Black John Oliver. He, he talks smack about the parent company. He doesn't get in trouble. Why should I? I'm just telling it like it is. I'm just telling it I was reporting. All right, let's move on to the final story. Uh, this comes from the New York Times, written by Roxanne Gay, who is a fantastic writer. Anonymous wrote in, drafting an escape plan. They talk about how they have a dead-end job and how they don't make enough to live and how there's no opportunity to move upward and how they're just basically ready to go. Roxanne says, hey, We've all been there, polish the resume, and then try to get out. But don't don't leave until you have something. Which is something I always feel all the not all the time, but what I've what I've felt many times before at Bounce TV, Court TV. I gave my all. And I I even during a pandemic, one of five people out of two hundred and some going into the office, risking my life. I was a hero. Thank you for thank you. Thank me for my service. And uh, uh, and I was just laid off over uh, over Zoom by somebody who uh, th- the previous week I asked for a raise during our uh, annual meeting. She said, I'll see what I could do the f- next week. Let me go in one day. The uh, two days after that, she was uh, uh, promoted to VP or uh, whatever BS. And uh, then I reached out to the HR people. Who, who literally said the words to me, if you need anything, don't hesitate to email or call. And honey, I, I, oh, I did that so many times. <laughs> hey, it's Chad, just check it in. Hey, I'm interested in this job. But <laughs> I remember everybody's names. I remember every single person who crossed me wrong. I remember every single person who did me right. But I also remember every single person who crossed me wrong. I was going to say some names, but I'm not going to. Not until I, not until I, I'm on that stage, winning some awards, rubbing it in their face. When it comes to dead end jobs, and there's other, there's other uh, 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 pieces of uh, written 
in here that are talking about like toxic office talk, which I, oh my God, it, when I'd see at any news organization, no matter how good a person thinks they are and how, how, and by good, I mean like, how, like, the, oh, I treat the, I'm so nice in the world and I'm so nice to everybody. Every, there's always somebody talking smack. And I, and I, and I genuinely with all of my heart hate that. It's always like, especially at CNN, uh, people will come in and be like, and, and I, and I, I mentioned this in interviews and I'm, and, and I'm just going, Hey, I just want a positive environment. But, uh, people would come in before shows on CNN and be like, this is going to be a shitty show. And like, why are you, why are you putting out this negativity? Like who cares? Just do the work and get through it. I don't go in the gym and go, I'm going to have a shitty time in the gym. No, I'm going to, I get in even when I'm not feeling it and I do my best and that's it. And then there are uh, conflicts of interest and all that stuff. But with dead end jobs, I, 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 I do think that it's always, it's always possible to do your best and to give everything that you possibly can at that moment of time. This quiet quitting stuff, uh, uh, all that other, just like, just, just do it, just do it. Even if it's baseline, just do the job. Just do the job. You think I want to go to a country club every day, five days a week and, and clean up trash from rich white people? I don't. I don't. But you know what? I do just enough to get by. <laughs> That's very true. I do just enough to get by. And I don't do anything more, <laughs> but I do do my best. I don't, I don't half-ass anything. And, and you know, other, I mean, I, it's like true. I truly, I've been in so many dead end jobs. I've been in more dead end jobs. I'm like Homer Simpson. I've done, and, and Peter Griffin, I've done so many, but more so Homer Simpson. Uh, Cause I've done so many jobs and, and uh, uh, it, it, I truly hope it stops soon. Cause I'm sick of it. But I, you know, but I, I have, I don't have a lot of room to complain because I, I'm kind of stuck into doing things. I've served at restaurants that that stunk a lot that have closed. <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I, I walk dogs for a now defunct dog walking company. I was, uh, what, oh, I was, when I did the factory, I was at the, fa- oh my God, when I, that was my first job out of college. I was working at a UPS factory for about a year, for several months. And, um, it, it's, it really sucked to be, <laughs> to be like, everybody else is like in these, in their entry level jobs and they've got benefits. And, and then I'm, I'm sitting, it's like 11, it's 11 45 PM, four days before Christmas. And I'm pumping boxes onto a, off a conveyor belt. Oh my gosh. That was a dead, that was a true dead end job. And I, I I'm technically in a dead end job right now, but that was a true dead end job where you know, you'd have like 40, 50, 60 year old people and they're like I've been doing this for 40, 30, 40 years. I'm like, "Jesus. <laughs> you been doing this?" <laughs> same thing, same thing with the the country club right now. It's uh a lot of a lot of people are like, hey, next year you're gonna be able to make a dollar, a dollar more. <laughs> no, I'm not excited about that. Why does the Wi-Fi on my iPad keep dying and turning off? All right. Anyway, just do do the best you can. That's all I can say. Hey, listen, if you like what you heard here. Head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where I talk to your favorite people in the entertainment industry. More recently, I just talked to Ashley Ray, comedian, Ashley Ray, writer, Ashley Ray, very funny person, a very funny person, excuse me. We got to stop taking articles out of sentences. I'm a writer, so I know what an article is. I'm not going to explain it to you, Ashley Ray. She did uh, released her new album, Ice Cream Money. is a debut album. She's a fantastic person. She's a podcaster as well. Listen to TV, I say, with Ashley Ray. And, uh, oh, also I talked to Ahmed Al-Qadari. Uh, you can check out his, his uh, new special. It's on his YouTube. You can watch 
both of those interviews on youtube.com slash C plus comedy, where you can also see a video version of this show, this very show. You can also listen to the other podcasts and see video versions of the other podcasts, the constitutionals, wherever you get your podcast and late night, lately, the late, late night show show. You can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook at C plus comedy, me at Chad black white. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.